Today in cannabis news, U.S. Senators call for federal SBA loan access for cannabis companies. Following U.S. Olympian Shikari Richardson's disqualification, members of Congress push for an update in cannabis regulations. And as the White House seeks for international conference with the World Anti-Doping Agency, a leading U.S. professional sports authority says cannabis restrictions must change. Broadcasting live from the Tricombs.com studios in Southern California, it's time for your morning buzz. We bring you late-breaking news that keeps you up to date with what's happening in the cannabis industry. It's Tuesday, July 13th, and Tricombs.com is bringing you the top cannabis news from around the web. You can also listen on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Search Tricombs and subscribe. First up, Senators Cory Booker and Bernie Sanders, along with a coalition of U.S. Senators, have issued a letter to the Appropriations Committee calling for provisions enabling cannabis companies to receive loans and financial assistance from the Federal Small Business Administration to be added to a forthcoming spending bill report. The senators explicitly requested that verbiage be inserted to the FSGG spending bill report for fiscal year 2022 to assure that the SBA is permitted to approve financing to these firms. Senator Jackie Rosen spearheaded the letter, which details the specific economic pressures that state-licensed cannabis businesses confront as cannabis stays illegal on the federal level. The lawmakers argue that making SBA loans and disaster aid available to the sector is particularly important since the monies will fill gaps left by the private sector and help mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The letter calls for the SBA to cease denying loan applications for the 7A Loan Guarantee Program, Disaster Assistance Program, Micro Loan Program, and 504 Certified Development Company Loan Program to legally operating cannabis small businesses in states that have legalized cannabis sale and use, adding that there is a clear shift in public opinion supporting legalization of cannabis in the United States. Next up, a band of 18 members of the U.S. Congress have issued a letter denouncing the disqualification of renowned American sprinter Shakari Richardson from competing in this month's Olympic Games due to a positive cannabis screening. They're also asking for a policy shift from professional sports regulatory organizations to keep it from occurring in the future. The move to disqualify Richardson has sparked outrage, particularly given that they confessed to consuming cannabis in a legal region after hearing of the passing of their mother. Richardson, who was considered among the fastest humans in the United States and globally, sealed their per- sealed their position on Team USA at the age of 21 years by dominating the 100-meter sprint with a time of 10.86 seconds on June 18. The letter was spearheaded by Representatives Barbara Lee and Earl Blumenauer, co-chairs of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus, who urged the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency, or USADA, to eliminate cannabis from the Prohibited Substances Registry. The cannabis prohibition is outdated and restrictive, according to the legislators. Although they concur that athletes should not be under the influence of any substance during competition, we disagree that cannabis should be included in the list and that prior usage in an athlete's private life should be grounds for sanction, at least till new technologies to screen for impairment are formed. The letter added that cannabis is on the list while alcohol, which has proven health risks associated with its use and abuse, is not. Last up. Regarding the disqualification of American runner Shikari Richardson due to a positive cannabis screening, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency stated in a response to a letter from U.S. congressional lawmakers that cannabis laws for global athletes must change. In a separate development, the White House is said to be requesting a discussion with international sporting authorities to review the policy shift. Representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Jamie Raskin previously issued a letter to the U.S. Olympic Committee regarding Richardson's suspension after they confessed to consuming cannabis in a legal region following their mother's passing. USADA voiced sympathies for the sprinter and said that the cannabis restrictions might need to be reconsidered, but the most recent statement openly urges for a change of policy. 
Simultaneously, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy is attempting to set up a discussion with the World Anti-Doping Agency to address cannabis regulations in global sports. Amid all of this, Richardson remains disqualified from competing in this month's Olympics. Some who have backed the move on Richardson have argued that because cannabis is illegal in many other nations, it's nonsensical to ignore a global regulation simply because legalization is gaining traction in the United States. However, it was the U.S. that first led the charge in pressuring the International Olympic Committee to include cannabis to the Registry of Prohibited Substances in the 1990s. In 1998, then-U.S. drug czar Barry McCaffrey, who served under President Bill Clinton, issued a memo to the IOC saying that the Olympics must adopt a comprehensive anti-drug program that must involve penalizing athletes who test positive for recreational drugs such as cannabis. We raise Olympic athletes up on an international pedestal for all the world's children to look up to as role models. It is vital that the message they send is drug-free, stated McCaffrey, who was then the leader of the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, which gave the IOC $1 million to counteract drug consumption. The goal of this whole effort must be to prevent Olympic medals and the Olympic movement from being tarnished by drugs, added McCaffrey. That was today's buzz. Thanks for listening. For more cannabis news and insights from industry professionals and a place to discuss these stories and others, visit trichomes.com. And be sure to catch up with all of our other cannabis industry-related podcasts like Hash It Out, Careers in Cannabis, or the International Cannabis Conversation wherever you get your podcasts. For trichomes.com, I'm RJ Balde. And I'm Devin Leal. Have a great day.